Hello, fellow graduates. Hello, graduates. Hello, graduates. Hello, class of 21. Class of 2021. We did it. Congratulations to us. Hey, have you ever heard this tune? I mean, I, uh, to be honest, I don't think I've ever heard that song before now. Am I a bad NYU student? It's Old New York University, written by R.W. Ferris, NYU class of 1909. Though not the NYU alma mater, that's the Palisades. Old New York University became the NYU fight song. Uh, what is a fight song? <laughs> I know what a fight song is, okay? It's a song we cheer ourselves on with. It's a tune to cheer on your team. Fight songs were a thing back in the day, like way back. I'm talking 1873 up to 1953, back when we actually had a football team. Back then, our biggest rival was Fordham, and our football games were played on a baseball field. In fact, we actually played football at the old Yankee Stadium. Back then, we cheered on our school with our fight song. So today, I cheer on you, my fellow graduate. We cheer for all of us. Hurrah for NYU. All New York University. for the NYU class of 2021.
Live from the NYU Skirball Center for the Performing Arts in New York City. Good morning. Welcome to New York University's 2021 virtual all university commencement.
Please welcome the Vice Provost of New York University, Clay Shirky. Here now, in the presence of candidates for academic recognition, members of the faculty and administration, alumni, trustees, both in person and joining us online, New York University's 2021 virtual all-university commencement is hereby convened. Please welcome Lisa M. Coleman, Senior Vice President for Global Inclusion and Strategic Innovation. Hello, I'm Dr. Lisa Coleman and my pronouns are she and her. It is a pleasure to be here today and join in celebrating the class of 2021. We take this moment to acknowledge the indigenous peoples whose lands we now occupy. We are gathered here on the Washington Square campus of NYU and many of us joining are, are joining virtually. NYU acknowledges that the university is a global institution, is located on unceded lands, and was founded upon exclusions and erasures of indigenous people, as well as the discounted labor of many. We continue our efforts to both recognize and dismantle these systemic exclusions and systems of oppression. We would also like to take a moment to honor those who've come before us, our ancestors who paved the way for us to be here today. We honor those who are known and unknown to us, as well as those whose labor and intellectual contributions have gone unacknowledged. Without you, we would not be here to continue the work of transforming our world and our communities. Please join me in five second moment of silence. Hello, class of 2021. I'm Bill Berkeley, chair of NYU's Board of Trustees and a proud 1966 graduate of the Stern School of Business. Times were a little different back then. When I was a student, the university had five fewer schools, just one study away site, and no central library. Bopes was under construction. NYU did, like today, house one of the world's most advanced supercomputers. Only it weighed 12,000 pounds and had a memory of less than a megabyte. But even though many things have changed, you and I share something important in common. Our connection to NYU cemented at this moment of graduation. You are about to join an illustrious group of NYU alumni, numbering more than a half a million worldwide. NYU's network of graduates can be a wonderful source of support and connection throughout your life. So think of this not just as the culmination of your time at NYU, but also as the beginning of a lifelong relationship with your alma mater. I can tell you from experience that it can be enormously rewarding. Class of 2021 today marks a significant hard-earned milestone in your lives. The Empire State Building glowed violet in your honor last night, a symbol of our enormous pride in you. Congratulations, warmest wishes, and welcome to the NYU alumni family. Hello, NYU. This is Senator Chuck Schumer, and it's my honor to address President Andrew Hamilton, Provost Catherine Fleming, the faculty and staff, the families and friends of the graduates, but most of all, you, the class of 2021. Congratulations. First, a quick word to the parents. As a parent myself, I know how much you've invested in them, but it all pays off as you watch your son or daughter receive their diploma become an adult before your very eyes. Congratulations to the moms and dads. The challenges of this moment are truly unique, but so has been our collective response. The fact that we're still celebrating this graduation and not letting COVID stand in the way, even if we're celebrating differently, just goes to show you that New Yorkers won't let anything stop you from honoring what's so important in life. And nothing, nothing, and take away from the fact that you've earned a degree 
from such a fine institution of higher learning. We have a long way to go, but for the first time in more than a year, we can start to think about what it'll be like to return to normal. We're beginning to see light at the end of the tunnel, thanks to safe and highly effective vaccines. Class of 2021, don't let the harshness of this past year prevent you from seizing new opportunities. They're out there. You just have to keep your eyes open to them. Don't forget, you have incredible assets, a college degree from a great institution, and loving families who will have your back through thick and thin. Our nation is overcoming this pandemic, and we need your help and your courage to rebuild our country even stronger than it was before. This past year has revealed the injustices and prejudices that persist in our society. We must make our society better, and we know you will, because you are our future leaders, and we have faith in you. So to NYU Class of 2021, I say once again, congratulations, good luck, Godspeed. This has been an incredibly challenging year, and I am so inspired by the students of NYU and the work you have done to face it and to overcome it. I hope we can continue to tell others and show others the unity, grace, and resilience of our response to help each other. Sometimes it's hard to see past the struggles and frustration that you face every day, but everything is so much easier when we can tackle it together. So much of the world has changed due to the global pandemic, but now, we're going to be a part of that change. We are a very special class and you know it. Today, I'm graduating from the Graduate School of Arts and Science. I'm graduating from the Stern School of Business. And I'm graduating from the Grossman School of Medicine. And I'm graduating from the NYU Tandon School of Engineering. I'm graduating from the School of Global Public Health. And I'm graduating from Tisch School of the Arts. And I'm graduating from the Silver School of Social Work and I'm graduating from Global Liberal Studies. I am graduating from NYU College of Dentistry. I'm graduating from the Rory Myers School of Nursing. I'm graduating from the NYU School of Professional Studies. I'm graduating from NYU Wagner. I'm graduating from the College of Arts and Science. I'm graduating from the Steinhardt School of Culture, Education, and Human Development. I'm graduating from NYU School of Law. I'm graduating from the Gallatin School of Individualized Study. And I am graduating from NYU Abu Dhabi. I'm graduating from NYU Shanghai. Maybe it's because I'm graduating. I'm feeling a little bit optimistic right now. You've worked so hard and you've come so far, but this is only the beginning. My first day at NYU, I felt like I was dreaming. I mean, I just couldn't believe that I was going to be living in New York City for the next four years. I felt curious. Why is everyone going so fast? I felt excited, uh, my outfit was cute, my tan looked good. My first day at NYU, I felt like I was destined to be here until I realized I was in the wrong classroom. I feel like I really squeezed all the life out of these four years. Leaving NYU, I feel so proud. I feel confident and eager to take on the challenges of the world. I feel the strength to stand up for things that I sincerely believe in. I feel empowered. I'm ready to seize the day. The NYU community is so diverse. Brave. Tenacious, intelligent, and full of leaders. Very unpredictable, always full of surprises. Everyone is accepted and welcome here. My NYU community is full of hardworking weirdos. Talented, determined, ambitious, and sleepless. They are a family that I would like to stay with me forever. The opportunities I had through NYU were magic. NYU has provided me with the experiences and the challenges I needed to develop my confidence as an engineer and as a leader. Most importantly, I've learned to trust myself. I feel much more sure of myself and who I am as a person. NYU was a validator of my interest in public service. I think the thing that I'll miss most about NYU is just the sense of community that I got from walking around campus. Washington Square Park will always be iconic. I've had so many amazing memories with friends. One thing that I would miss about NYU and the village is having direct access to BOPES and all of the articles and books that I had. I think I'm going to miss absolutely everything about New York City, but I also think I'm going to start missing the things that I didn't really like. 
the tourists that kind of stop in the middle of the street uh, trying to take a picture when you're trying to run to class. I think I'm gonna miss all of that. Also, being a student, grown up life is scary. The energy, the life, feeling like everyone has somewhere to be, something to do, and that it's all thrilling. I had the opportunity to work with some of the most amazing researchers in the world. We're working with passionate, challenging, driven, and creative people. Professors at NYU are the best of the best. And surprisingly funny. My God. <laughs> NYU gave me the opportunity to move from India to one of the greatest cities I've ever lived in. Look at that view! New York City has provided me everything. It's provided me community, it's provided me culture, provided me the best food in the world, um, but above all, it is my forever home. The best thing about being an NYU student is that the world really is at your fingertips. I have met so many incredible people all over the world, and I know that no matter what I go on to do, I'm always going to have this incredible network to count on. Also, I learned Chinese, which I never thought I would do. I saw that there is a lot of people all over the world working to build a healthier and safer world. And I feel like I'm part of one big community. I'm confident that even though my time at NYU has come to an end, my love and pride for NYU will continue throughout the rest of my life. My hopes for the class of 2021 is that you all continue to take advantage of every opportunity that you're given and amaze the world with all of your talents and achievements. We are special. We are here graduating in the middle of a pandemic and that just shows how resilient we are. Always stay true to yourself and don't let anybody hold you back. NYU has taught you that anything is possible that the world is full of opportunities. Find strength in the smiles around you. Go out there and make history. To my fellow graduates, I just want to say congratulations. We did it! Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2021. Felicidades, class of 2021. Congratulations, class of 2021. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2021. We made it. And remember, class of 2021, stay iconic. Please welcome Dia Radhakrishna, who will receive a Bachelor of Arts from Liberal Studies and will now address her fellow graduates. Hello, NYU. If you had told me four years ago that I'd be here speaking before esteemed faculty and students from around the world, my first response would have been one question. What's Zoom? When I first got accepted into NYU and Global Liberal Studies, I never expected the phrase unprecedented times to become a constant refrain, for the window of my computer screen to become my window to knowledge and the world. But I also never anticipated the resilience, joy, and hope that I have gained through my time here. Even in the midst of a crisis, Resilience is something I learned from my professors in their virtual classrooms last year. They always encouraged my voice and my views. Even through the sounds of the traffic blaring from my busy street in Bangalore, India, every time I unmuted myself to talk. I learned to discover joy in things large and small. That aha moment when an ancient Indian text connects to classical Greek literature, belting the lyrics to Mamma Mia with my friends, being asked for directions on the street and wondering, am I finally a real New Yorker now? But hope has been the hardest thing to gain. 2020 did not feel like the year of hope. And it feels surreal to be speaking here when India is being ravaged by the pandemic but I have to trust in the resilience of my communities. I know that seeing my smile, even on a screen, will spark a little joy in my mother's eyes. My family sent their daughter 7,000 miles away from home, based on a single hope that she would find her passion and gain a deeper, 
broader understanding of the world. And I did. The power of that hope is here today, in me and in you, in the class of 2021. As we step into a world that feels ever-changing and unknowable, the words of the German poet Rilke come to mind. Where something becomes extremely difficult and unbearable, he wrote, there we also stand already quite near its transformation. We are experiencing the world in transformation and we are stepping into it together with resilience, joy, and hope. Thank you and congratulations. To the esteemed NYU class of 2021, my name is Daniel Day Kim. I'm an actor, a producer, a fellow NYU alum, and most importantly, an NYU dad. In fact, I have a son who's there right now, so I know a little bit about what this past year has been like for you, and I know it's been tough. In fact, I actually remember that when my son graduated from high school, one of the gifts he got was the Dr. Seuss book, Oh, the Places You'll Go. But when I think about all that you guys have been through to get here today, all I can think is, oh, the places you've been. <laughs> you've endured constant testing, lockdowns, quarantines, vaccinations, stay-at-home learning, hybrid learning, remote learning, what haven't you been through? And you went through it all in the city that was hit the hardest when the pandemic first started. And yet, here you are. You braved it all. You are battle-tested, and you are stronger for it. And that's a good thing, because you're going to need all of that strength, determination, and resilience as you make your way in this new world. We face serious issues regarding race relations, rebuilding a global economy, increased polarization and tribalism, and of course, climate change. To be frank, these are the things that we as generations before you have failed to overcome, and it represents a legacy that none of us should be proud of. But I also firmly believe that no group of people is better equipped to handle these issues than the one I'm speaking to right now. You have an incredible awareness of the problems facing our world today. And I can't tell you how encouraged I've been seeing how many of you have raised your voices to become advocates for real change. You've seen firsthand the movements, the marches, the victories, the tragedies. You've seen humanity at its best and its worst. That first-hand experience makes you truly unique witnesses to history as it's being made. And as a result, it puts you in a place like no other to do something about it. And I hope you will. But I also hope you'll build on the positive work generations before you have done. Because, come on now, not everything your parents' generation did was bad, right? There's a lot to be proud of. So as you sit here today, I hope you can take a breath, look around, and just feel a little bit of that pride that your faculty, your loved ones, and people like me feel for you right now. You deserve it, and you've earned it. So now go celebrate, safely and responsibly. Like I told you, I'm a dad too, so I'm always looking out for you guys. So let me take this opportunity to be one of the very first to welcome you to the family of NYU alumni. Changing the world starts with you. And I, for one, can't wait to see what you do with the place. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Warm greetings to you all. My name is Tony Fauci, and I'm the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the National Institutes of Health and the chief medical advisor to President Joe Biden. Congratulations to New York University's class of 2021. Speaking to you brings back wonderful memories for me. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and had the good fortune to attend Regis High School on 85th Street between Madison and Park, and later medical school at the Wild Cornell College of Medicine, a short distance northeast of NYU. The profound upending of your lives by COVID-19 is unprecedented. And the hurting and struggling world that you will enter after graduation 
is far different from the one you left when you started college. However, we all must adjust to this extraordinary situation and unite to overcome its challenges. I'm confident that NYU has well prepared you to adapt, innovate, and thrive despite the unforeseen roadblocks that this pandemic has thrown in your way. As the U.S. navigates year two of this historic pandemic, we can be heartened by the rapid, widespread deployment of highly effective COVID-19 vaccines and the recent signs of sustained progress against the pandemic. If each of us does our part, we can reduce to very low levels the risk of virus transmission and step-by-step step begin restoring what we most miss in our lives. I believe this is the America we want it to be, a country that when the going gets tough, does the hard work necessary to meet the challenge and turn things around. Importantly, our country also has a moral responsibility to and tradition of helping others. So as you venture forth on your chosen paths, please keep well, look out for one another, and I wish you all the best. President Hamilton, distinguished faculty members, staff, family members, to the parents, and to the graduating class of 2021. I'm Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, chair of the House Democratic Caucus and the representative of the 8th Congressional District in New York, here in the People's Republic of Brooklyn. I'm also a proud graduate of New York University School of Law. And it's my honor and privilege to congratulate the graduating class of 2021 on this tremendous accomplishment. Your parents are proud of you. The family members who've loved on you throughout this journey are proud of you. The community and the school is proud of you. I'm here as a member of the United States Congress to make it clear that the country is proud of you as well. You've confronted tremendous adversity and overcome it throughout your educational journey, a once in a century pandemic that is both a public health crisis and an economic crisis. Yet through it all, you confronted the adversity, rose to the occasion, kept working hard, made the adjustments necessary to bring you to this day. And that's what life will continue to throw at you as you move forward beyond this moment. Life is filled with ups and downs, highs and lows, trials and tribulations. Life is filled with unexpected turbulence. But what I found is that you can't get from your point of departure to your point of destination along the way without at some point encountering that turbulence. But you've demonstrated to the world that you have the ability to deal with whatever curveball life may throw in your direction and to keep moving forward. Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. All that matters is the courage to continue. Take that lesson with you as you travel throughout life and I'm confident that the best is yet to come and you will be whatever you want to be in this world. God bless you. God bless NYU. And God bless the United States of America. Congratulations. Please welcome Deborah N. Archer, Jacob K. Javits Professor, Professor of Clinical Law and Co-Faculty Director, Center on Race, Inequality, and the Law, NYU School of Law, and President of the American Civil Liberties Union. Good morning, New York University Class of 2021. As so many people have said before, this has been a year like no other. Graduating would have been an extraordinary accomplishment in any year, but to graduate in 2021, you have my congratulations and deep admiration. I wanna start by sharing a confession with you. 
Brian Stevenson is my faculty colleague at the law school, and his office is a few doors down from mine. For those of you who don't know, Professor Stevenson, he is a world-renowned social justice advocate and author. He's the founder of the Equal Justice Initiative and the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, and he's just an extraordinary human being. Occasionally, as I walk by his office, I'll reach out and I'll touch his door in the hopes that some of his clarity and courage will rub off on me. Clarity to know where I can be the most effective advocate for justice and the courage to step up and lead when called. And right now, at this moment, in this country, I am touching that door more often, calling on that clarity and that courage. I've spent my career working as a civil rights lawyer. I've worked with people and communities all over the country fighting racism, discrimination, and inequality, working with people fighting for dignity and respect. That work is never easy, but some days, some years, it can feel like we're losing more than we're winning, and the losses become harder to bear. So I touched that door for inspiration. Now, I know it's just a door, it's not magic, and I don't want all of you running over to the law school looking for Professor Stevenson's office. I share this story because I know that as you leave NYU and continue your path in the world, many of you will need some inspiration from time to time. You may need help finding courage. The problems we face in this world are deep, entrenched, and complex. Hunger, war, inequality, racism, the oppression of women and members of the LGBTQ plus community, climate change and its impact, the dehumanization of black bodies, black communities, and black identity. But as big as those problems are, there is one thing I know for sure. There is no problem in this world, no crisis, no injustice, that we cannot solve together. If history tells us anything, it is that the impossible is possible. Your accomplishments today are proof of that fact. There's a saying in the black community that we are our ancestors' wildest dreams. And I believe that and I have felt that so many times. And each and every one of you should feel that powerfully today. You have achieved things that your ancestors would never have imagined. You are the dreams of those who have fought so that this world could be more free so that I could be in this place and have the opportunity to serve, so that you could be in this place and have an opportunity to lead. You are proof that the impossible is possible. But as you go about solving the crises in our world, remember it will not be easy. It will require agitation, as we saw this year. Frederick Douglass told us, quote, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet deprecate agitation are men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the awful roar of its many waters. Today, the fight for freedom takes thunder and lightning. The fight for equality requires the ocean's awful roar. It is a blessing to be alive in this moment not only to reap the benefits of the courage and sacrifices of those who fought and led and organized and survived before us, but to be alive when our service is so desperately needed, to have the opportunity to work for justice when there is such a vital work to do. So NYU graduates, you are the key to making the impossible possible. Know that you will at times struggle for clarity, there will be times when you lose courage. If it helps in those moments, find your door to touch. There is no shame in that. But know that you really don't need it because you have everything you need to rise to the moment and to create the world we want, the world we deserve. In conclusion, I say once again, congratulations to the class of 2021. I can't wait to live in the world you helped create. Walk by faith and not by sight.
As we embark on this fresh and formidable fight of adulthood, may we strive to be what we cannot yet see. When gazing at the stars above, no many are hidden, but still beloved. The greatness of our inner light shines brightest in the dark of night. Through past years' trials of stress and pain, we found beauty in this lasting rain. The downpour nourished our wildest dreams and gave us courage to swim across new streams, to find our own way and build bold new things, to stumble and fall and rise up with new wings. For the sun is not all that helps us to grow. From rain clouds and dirt are born a meadow. So close this life chapter and start one anew. Cherish the laughter, but also the skews. Our value in this big wide world is not made up of money or pearls. We're on one big rock searching for purpose, comprising one sensational circus. So when your life story has finally ended, know in your heart that your life has been blended with faces unseen and voices unheard. Life's biggest stars have dreams once deferred. As you pursue your next feat, do not soon forget the faces unseen who helped your success. Without cleaners or cooks, there are no CEOs. Without farmers or grocers, there's nothing to grow. So when someone bets on your big bright star, remember those who got you this far. Our pain is connected and our triumphs too, but it all means nothing if you cannot be true to yourself and to those who first cherished you. What we owe to each other is rather quite plain. It's respecting all people and remembering names. No matter where life takes you or what riches you gain, value life's hidden stars, the faces unseen, and people unnamed. Please welcome the president of New York University, Andrew Hamilton. Hello, graduates. Every year, I choose a different theme to address the graduating class at commencement. But while the topic varies, the last word of the speeches is typically the same. Congratulations. After all, every NYU class deserves to be recognized for their accomplishments and sent off into the world with our best wishes. But now a spoiler alert. Today's speech will also end with the word congratulations. But its meaning to me is very different this year. Class of 2021 one of the most consequential years of your lives, the year in which you complete your undergraduate or graduate degree, that year coincided with one of the most consequential years in modern history. The past 12 months have seen the most serious public health emergency in a century. Also a reckoning of racial justice amid appalling continued acts of violence, and also a polarizing US presidential election coupled with threats to our institutions of democracy. Now, philosophers tell us that it's possible to find meaning in hardship. At the same time, a high schooler echoed the view of many of us this spring when she told the New York Times, Making history is way overrated, and they are both right. Over the past year, some of you responded to the momentous events we faced by finding a new sense of purpose. Some of you changed your career or your research plans. Some of you discovered new reserves of grit, and some of you relied on the support of friends and family. 
on some days, it was a victory to change out of your pajamas. Some of you never changed out of your pajamas. And that's okay too. Many of you at some point felt grief, anxiety, outrage, or fear. But even though each of your experiences was unique, there is one triumph that you all share. You kept moving forward. You kept writing papers and evaluating lab data and composing music and completing case studies. You kept tapping that daily access screener and zooming into classes, sometimes across distant time zones. You studied for finals and defended dissertations. You each completed a demanding course of study. And today, you are earning a degree from one of the premier universities in the world. There is something else that each one of you has earned over this past year. The certain knowledge that you can do difficult things and that will always be with you. When challenging circumstances arise in your life, you will be able to draw on this year and say, I've got this. I've done something extraordinary before. So this year, class of 2021, congratulations honors each of your experiences. It honors every hopeful, messy, enlightening, exhausting, inspired, maddening, transcendent moment that brought you to this point. Today, you are New York University graduates. Congratulations. Please welcome Dasha Ritu, President of the NYU Alumni Association and member of the NYU Board of Trustees. Good morning and congratulations. As a proud graduate of the Gallatin School of Individualized Study, Class of 2014, I'm delighted to welcome you to the NYU Alumni Association. You should be incredibly proud of your accomplishments as you move to this next chapter of your personal and professional journey. Although you are graduating into a world that looks very different from the one you initially envisioned, the NYU AA is here to support you beyond your time at NYU. In addition to having access to a wealth of alumni programs, free perks, volunteer opportunities, and services that are exclusively available to you as members of the NYU AA, you also join an amazing global alumni network that is eager to meet you. In fact, your first alumni and parents weekend is just around the corner <laughs> in October a great opportunity to reconnect with classmates and meet fellow graduates from all over the world. On behalf of the entire alumni community, I want to share how proud we all are of you. Stay in touch, be engaged, and get involved in the NYU AA. We can't wait to see you soon. Once again, the Vice Provost of New York University, Clay Shirky. The deans of each school will now present their school representatives. The official conferral of all degrees and certificates will take place after all the deans have presented. Jean Jarrett, Dean of the College of Arts and Science, Mr. President, I would like to present Jendai Omowale, who will receive their Bachelor of Arts 
on behalf of the 2,127 <laughs> candidates of the College of Arts and Science who received their degrees today. Trevor Morrison, Dean of the School of Law. Mr. President, I would like to present Julia E. Paranyuk, who will receive her Juris Doctor on behalf of the 729 candidates of the School of Law who received their degrees today. Stephen B. Abramson, Executive Vice President and Vice Dean for Education, Faculty and Academic Affairs, Grossman School of Medicine. Mr. President, I would like to present Kanitha Ahmed, who will receive her Doctor of Medicine on behalf of the 121 graduates of the Grossman School of Medicine who received their degree today. Yelena Kovacevic, Dean of the Tandon School of Engineering. Mr. President, I would like to present Sofia Barisheva, who will receive her Bachelor of Science on behalf of the 2,199 candidates of the Tandon School of Engineering who received their degrees today. Charles N. Bertolami, Dean of the College of Dentistry. Mr. President, I would like to present Dr. Elizabeth Garrison, our DDS valedictorian, who will receive her Doctor of Dental Surgery degree on behalf of the 542 candidates of the College of Dentistry who received their degrees and certificates today. Susan Antone, Interim Dean of the Graduate School of Arts and Science. President Hamilton, Provost Fleming, it is my honor on behalf of the Graduate School of Arts and Science to present the student who will be receiving her diploma today on behalf of the graduates of GSAS. I'm delighted to present Ms. Carmen Hutchinson, who will receive her diploma on behalf of the students receiving their master's degree, advanced certificates, and doctoral degrees in the Graduate School of Arts and Science. Jack H. Knott. Dean of the Steinhardt School of Culture, Education, and Human Development. Mr. President, I would like to present Lorena Kansky, who will receive her Master of Arts degree on behalf of the 2,730 candidates of the Steinhardt School of Culture, Education, and Human Development who received their bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees today. Raghu Sundaram, Dean of the Leonard N. Stern School of Business. Mr. President, I would like to present Ariana Sanchez, who will receive her Master of Business Administration on behalf of the 2,027 candidates of the Leonard and Stern School of Business who received their degrees and certificates today.
Eileen Sullivan Marks, Dean of the Rory Myers College of Nursing. Mr. President, I would like to present Gavin Arneson, who will receive his Bachelor of Science in Nursing on behalf of the 684 candidates of the Rory Myers College of Nursing who receive their degrees and certificates today. Susan Greenbaum, Dean of the School of Professional Studies. Mr. President, I would like to present Rachel Jiwan Kim, who will receive her Bachelor of Science on behalf of the 1,904 candidates of the School of Professional Studies who will receive their Associate, Baccalaureate, and master's degrees today. Sherry Gleed, Dean of the Robert F. Wagner Graduate School of Public Service. Mr. President, I would like to present Divya Jethwani, who will receive her Master of Public Administration in Public and Nonprofit Management and Policy on behalf of the 331 candidates of the Robert F. Wagner Graduate School of Public Service who received their degrees and advanced certificates today. Neil Guterman, Dean of the Silver School of Social Work. Mr. President, I would like to present Jasmine Colazzo, who will receive her Doctor of Social Welfare in Clinical Social Work on behalf of the 568 graduates of the Silver School of Social Work, who will receive their Bachelor of Science, Master of Social Work, Doctor of Social Welfare, and Doctor of Philosophy in Social Work degrees today. Allison Green, Dean of the Tisch School of the Arts. Mr. President, it is my joy to present Sabrina Song, who will receive her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music on behalf of the 1,340 artists, scholars, and entrepreneurs of the Tisch School of the Arts who receive their degrees today. Suzanne Wofford, Dean of the Gallatin School of Individualized Study. Mr. President, I would like to present Judy Luo, who will receive her bachelor's degree on behalf of 513 Bachelor of Arts and Master of Arts candidates of the Gallatin School of Individualized Study, who will, will receive their degrees here today. Julie Mostov, Dean of Liberal Studies. Mr. Oh. Mr. President, I would like to present Dia Radhakrishna, who will receive her Bachelor of Arts degree on behalf of the 154 candidates of Global Liberal Studies who receive their degrees today.
Mariette Westerman, Vice Chancellor of NYU Abu Dhabi. Mr. President, I would like to present Thais Thomas, who will receive her Bachelor of Arts degree on behalf of the 336 candidates of NYU Abu Dhabi who received their degrees and certificates today. Jeffrey S. Lehman, Vice Chancellor of NYU Shanghai. Mr. President, it is my honor to present Bella Xu Yitong, who will receive her Bachelor of Science degree on behalf of the 281 candidates from NYU Shanghai who will receive their degrees today. Congratulations. Yay. Cheryl G. Hilton, Dean of the School of Global Public Health. Mr. President, I would like to present Inez Maria Del Giudici, who will receive her Master's of Public Health on behalf of 298 candidates of the School of Global Public Health, who will receive their degrees and certificates today. Please welcome President Andrew Hamilton and Vice Provost Clay Shirky. We now proceed to the formal conferral of degrees. In keeping with university tradition, we highlight this important moment by passing the university torch, the symbol of learning, from a senior member of our academic community to the most junior. Holding the university torch is Professor Judith Haber, Ursula Springer Leadership Professor in Nursing at the Rory Meyer College of Nursing. Professor Haber will pass the torch to the youngest baccalaureate member of the graduating class. Victoria Tong, 19 years old, graduating from the College of Arts and Science. Will all the candidates please now rise. Members of the class of 2021, through your successful efforts, as certified by the recommendations of your deans, you deserve to receive this hallmark of New York University. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees, I admit you to the degrees and certificates for which you have been recommended. It is now official. You are NYU graduates. Congratulations. Graduates, you have now joined the ranks of NYU alumni who since 1831 have shared their knowledge and used their talents to benefit humanity. Continue this tradition, embodying the words of our motto, per stare et praestare, persevere and excel. We look forward to being with you in person for our full commencement exercises once they are rescheduled. But now I wish you farewell from the stage of NYU Skirball Center for the Performing Arts and many, many congratulations to you all. Well done. Thank you. 